Musa alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that when he was a young man, he had a very traumatic incident, a very unfortunate incident that occurred. Musa alayhi salam, young man, grows up in the palace of Fir'aun, but he does know that he's from Banu Israel. He's walking through the marketplace one day, and there's a man from Banu Israel, simple poor man, and he sees Musa alayhi salam, and he cries out, and he says, Musa, Musa, look at this guy, look what he's doing to me. And it was a man from the people of Fir'aun, the Qiptiyun, used to persecute and violate the rights of the people of Banu Israel. So Musa Ali Sam goes there and tells the Qipti, what are you doing? What's going on over here? And the Qipti, of course, he's part of the elite. He tells him, he goes, why don't you move along and mind your own business? And Musa Ali Sam says, oh, I'm trying to make sure everything is okay here. And the man turns around and gets in Musa Ali Sam's face. Like, what are you going to do about it? So Musa alayhi salam to kind of defend himself, he pushes the man, he strikes the man, shoves him off of him, not realizing it is his own strength due to an unfortunate circumstance, the man ends up dying. Either due to the blow or because of the fall, he ends up dying. Now, it was not intentional, nobody really else was around. That man from Banu Israel, he runs off and Musa alayhi salam leaves the scene as well. And before you know it, this whole panic breaks out into the city, into the town. Somebody killed one of the elite. Somebody killed one of the people of Fir'aun. Nevertheless, Musa alayhi salam is passing through the marketplace again soon thereafter. Again, that man from Banu Israel is standing there fighting with somebody. Musa alayhi salam sees him and he says, you're making trouble again? Meaning that last time you were making trouble, something so terrible happened and you're making trouble again? And the man screams out, Musa don't kill me like you killed the other guy the other day. And everyone finds out that Musa alayhi salam was involved in the accidental death of that man. Fir'aun and his people put out the word to arrest with the possibility of executing Musa alayhi salam in retribution for the death of the other individual. At that point in time, somebody comes to Musa alayhi salam and says, you need to get out of town. Musa alayhi salam leaves there. And from there, he goes to Madian, settles down, finds a mentor, finds a wife, raises a family, really, really figures things out. And he's out there for a very long time, 10 years or so. Now Musa alayhi salam is traveling, that's where he sees the fire in the distance and he goes there and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selects him and chooses him for prophethood, gives him divine inspiration, revelation. As part of his mission, he tells him, Idhab ila Fir'aun innahu tagha. Go to Fir'aun because Fir'aun has lost his mind, he's gone way too far. Musa alayhi salam immediately expresses his concern to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he makes lots of dua. Musa alayhi salam even says to Allah, وَلَهُمَ عَلَيَّ ذَنْبٌ فَأَخَافُ أَنْ يَقْتُلُونَ I am wanted for a sin there amongst those people and I'm afraid that they're going to try to kill me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَلَّا فَاذْهَبَا بِآيَاتِنَا إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ مُسْتَمِعُونَ He says, no, absolutely not. Go and go with our signs. Go with these miracles and these signs and this message that I have given to you. We are watching and listening over you. Now Musa alayhi salam when he shows up and he presents to him the message inna rasulu rabbil alameen an arsil ma'ana bani israel the very first thing that Fir'aun responds with alam nu rabbika fina walida now I want you to hear the tone didn't you grow up from childhood amongst us and you lived for many many years amongst us wa fa'alta fa'alata kallati fa'alta wa anta min al kafirin and you did what you did back when you did it and you were a bad person you can tell right off the bat Fir'aun is not being honest he's not being sincere, he's being facetious, he's being sarcastic, he's mocking Musa alayhi salam. He immediately brings up his past and talks about his past. Musa alayhi salam of course owns up to it. قَالَ فَعَلْتُهَا إِذَنْ I did do it back then. إِذَنْ وَأَنَا مِنَ الضَّالِينَ But I didn't do it intentionally and I didn't do it knowing what I know now. See, everything Allah tells us in the Qur'an is profound, it's got a purpose, it's got a meaning, it's got a reason to it. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala share with us the incident about the man dying from the youth of Musa alayhi salam? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then shared with us the fact that when Musa alayhi salam comes back to preach to Fir'aun, the very first thing that Fir'aun brings up, hangs over his head, rubs in his face, talks about in front of people, is what happened previously in his life, in his past. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about this because this is going to be something that is going to occur time and time and time again with people. Everyone's got a past. And we're going to have a lot of people who later on in life are going to come into the masjid come into the community and they're going to have a past. How are we going to deal with them? If the first thing that we do is talk about, think about, bring up, ask about what happened in their past, the mistakes that they made, 
We just behave like Fir'aun. What's the alternative? The alternative is that we leave their past behind. We don't think about their past. We don't talk about their past. We don't ask them about their past. We most definitely do not criticize them about their past. But rather, what do we do? We embrace them. We love them and we accept them for who they are right now, right here today. That is the example of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam embraced people. He accepted people. He did not judge people. Let their past be their past. The story of Wahshi, no matter what he's done, caused such pain to the Prophet ﷺ, assassinated his uncle. But the Prophet ﷺ said, the past is the past. And he accepted people for who they were right now, for where they were going, for what they could become, what they could achieve. That's what he paid attention to. That's how he treated them. I always like to share this story. It's a personal experience that I had that was very powerful. I met a young man who came to my masjid one time. I was the imam of a masjid and he came to the masjid covered in tattoos, but I didn't pay no attention to that. He made wudu, prayed with us. And it was the first time I'd ever seen him in the masjid. So my habit was when I saw somebody new, a new face, I would say salam, welcome them to the community, hoping they moved into the area, joined our congregation. So I said salam to him and asked him, and he said, yes, I just moved here. And he told me about where he moved from, and I knew the imam of his previous community who he was very close with, and we hit it off. And he ends up telling me his story. He says that I grew up in a bad place with some really bad influences in the family and in the neighborhood. I ended up living a life of crime. Dropped out of high school, on the streets, drugs, gangs, violence, all those unfortunate situations. He says eventually I was arrested for felony, third crime, and three strikes and that's it, you go to prison for life. He said I was 23 years old and I didn't want to spend the rest of my life in prison. And he says I came from a Muslim family, a Muslim background. I didn't know or remember much of my Islam. So as I was sitting there in the cell the night before I was going to be presented before the judge who was going to hear my case, it just hit me that my life was over. So he says I didn't even remember how to pray, I didn't even know what to say, I just remembered the position of sujood. So I fell down into sujood and I cried. I said, oh Allah, I'm sorry I messed up. Please give me another chance. And he says, I don't know, the only thing I could think of was something my mother used to tell me a lot when I was a kid. She always wanted me to memorize the Quran, be hafiz. So I just said, oh Allah, I will change my life and I will memorize the Quran. I spent the whole night crying in sujood. Next morning I go in front of the judge. My mom's there in the back of the courtroom. The judge tells me to stand up, looks at my file and he says, what if I dismissed your case right now? What would you go and do? Tell me. Because the judge said, I'm tired of locking away young people for the rest of their lives. What are you going to do with the rest of your life? And he said, it's funny you ask me that because I repented last night. I made the decision to change my life last night and I'm going to go and study my religion. I'm going to become a better person. So the judge said, case dismissed, get out of here, don't ever let me see you in my courtroom ever again. He says, I left from the courthouse, I didn't even go back home, I went straight to the masjid, I asked the imam at the masjid, I kept going until two days later, I ended up at a Quran memorization school, and I walked through the door, just jeans and a t-shirt, normal dude, but except covered in tattoos, from my hands all the way up to my neck, I just walked through the door, and one of the teachers, one of the shiyukh, he saw me, and, Assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum salam, how can I help you? And I said, I want to memorize the Quran. He said, come on in, let's sit down and talk. He said, I didn't even know how to read Alif Ba Ta Tha. Eight months later, I completed the memorization of the entire Quran. In eight months, memorized the entire Quran. When I met this brother years after this incident, he was married, he was a father, he had beautiful children. I remember him coming to the masjid with his children. He had beautiful character, beautiful akhlaq. He used to teach them the Quran. And I remember asking him to lead the prayer for my jama'ah, my congregation. He recited the Quran beautifully. You never know where somebody's from. You never know where they're going. Give everyone a fair shake, a fair chance. And remember, the second we judge somebody, we just behave like Fir'aun. Let's try to stay away from that. Let's try to be careful about that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to have the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.